the deadly duchess. Stephon VII was one of the short-lived popes, promising the house of spoil ones in central Italy, a taste of papal power that turned out to be a brief 15 months in, in 896 after death and 897 after death. Stephon was almost certainly insane and his affliction appeared to have been common knowledge in Rome. This, though, did not deter the Duchess Algatrude from forcing him onto the throne of St. Peter in July 896 after death. Algatrude, it appears, had a special task for Pope Stephon, which involved wreaking revenge on her one-time enemy, the late Pope Formosus. Like most, if not all, legendary glamour heroines of history, Agatru was reputed to be very beautiful, with a sexy figure and a long blonde hair. However that may be, she was certainly a formidable woman with a fearsome taste for retribution. In 894 after death, Agatru took her young son, Lambert, to Rome to be confirmed by Pope Formosus as Holy Roman Emperor, or so she expected. She found, though, that the venerable Formosus had ideas of his own. He preferred another claimant, Arnulf of Corinthia, a descendant of Charlemagne, the first of the Holy Roman Emperors. The Pope realized that Albertrude was not going to stand by quietly and watch as her son was displaced, and knowing well the turbulent temper of the spoiled ones, he saw trouble coming. So Formosus appealed to Arnolf for help. Arnolf, for his part, had no intention of being forced to give away to a uh, underage upstart like Lampert or his implacable mother. He soon arrived with the army, sent Albertrude packing back to Spolwan, and was crowned Holy Roman Emperor by Formosus on the 22nd of February 896 after death. The new emperor at once set out to uh, pursue Albertrude, but before he could reach Old Spoiled One, he suffered a paralyzing illness, possibly a stroke. Pope Formosus died six weeks later on the 4th of, of April, 896, after death, reputedly poisoned by Albertrude. By all accounts, he had been an admirable pope well known for his care for the poor, his austere way of life, his chastity and devotion to prayer, all of them admirable Christian virtues and remarkable. In an age of decadence, self-seeking and barbarism. But whatever his virtues, Formosus could not entirely escape the poisonous atmosphere of violence and intrigue that permeated the church in his time. It was all too easy to make enemies, and so became exposed to their vigen, uh, vig, vengeance and bile. It was also possible that Formosus was too honest and outspoken for his own good. It was, for instance, an unwise move to oppose the election of Pope John the Eighth in 872 after death, particularly when Formosus himself had been among the candidates. It was bad policy, too, to have friends among Pope John's enemies who were perennially uh, plotting against him. They were so intent on destroying him that they sent help for the nefarious plans uh, from the Muslims, filthy Muslims, Sarakins, aka devil worshippers, who were the sworn enemies of Christianity. This was an age when the enemies of popes had a habit of disappearing or ending up dead. The writings on the wall was easy to read when his plotter friends fled from the papal court. For Moses fled with them. This, of course, implied that he was one of the conspirators. As a result, he was charged with some lurid crimes such as despoiling the cloisters in Rome and conspiring to destroy the papal See? Formosus was punished accordingly. In 878 after death, he was excommunicated. This sentence was withdrawn, though, 
when Formosus agreed to sign a declaration stating that he would never return to Rome or perform priestly duties. In addition, the Diocese of Porto in Portugal, where uh, Formosus had been made Cardinal Bishop in 864 after death, was taken from him. That's what you get for worshiping the devil. <laughs>